Until so far, we have been studying the pipeline for finding the cell types in one sample. Now, let's consider the situation where we are comparing two samples. Most of the steps of this kind of analysis are now already familiar to you, but some extra consideration is needed. Often, when you are comparing two samples, for example, treated and non-treated samples, you want to, again, um, identify the cell types present in both samples and identify the conserved cell type markers, meaning genes that are expressed in a certain cell type in both of the samples. And you might also want to find cell type specific responses to the treatment. Now that we are comparing two samples, we have yet again more variability to take into account. We need to correct the batch effect between the two samples, or otherwise we won't be able to find the corresponding cells in the two samples. There are several methods for correcting the batch effect, and this has been a quickly developing area. We will take a closer look into the Surat version 3 correction method. As you can see, the pipeline for this integrated analysis has many familiar looking steps. Here too, we start with the quality control, filtering, normalization, and identifying the highly variable genes. After these steps, we combine and integrate the samples. Then, again something familiar, scaling and dimension reduction, and clustering. The analysis of the clusters is again a bit different, as we are interested also in the difference between the samples. Here you can see the pipeline in Chipster. Here are the two samples. And as you can see, the first steps are performed for both samples. The only thing we need to remember to do in the very first step is naming of the samples so that they can be distinguished later on. For plotting purposes, we use these short names in capital letters. Before combining the samples, we have separate R object for each sample. From here on, we only have one R object with all the data in it.